morning and uh, a warm welcome to Jamie Green this morning to the committee. Um, and we'll be considering a proposed uh, cross-party group on LB, LGBTI plus issues. And um, I would like to um, invite the member to make an opening statement about the CPG. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me along here this morning. It's a very odd to sit at the side of the, the desk in a room like this. Um, with the uh, US Supreme Court legalising gay marriage in 2015, and Ireland having amended its own constitution that same year, it is clear that unprecedented progress is being made for LGBT rights, thanks to the tireless advocacy of the community. And this is great news. But the last thing we can afford to do is become complacent. It is true that lesbian, gay, bisexual and trans acceptance has soared in Scottish society. Scotland is a very inclusive place, but that alone does not equate to true equality. As a society, we're still too quick to label people and put them in boxes. And despite their contributions to our communities and our country, too many people in the LGBTI community still face issues like bullying, mental health problems, sexual health problems, economic discrimination, and domestic violence in their daily lives. Therefore, we owe it above all to our young generation, to do more and be ever vigilant. There is no time or place to be, to be complacent. Now, the reaction I get from people when I told them I was thinking about setting up this group is remarkably consistent. I can't believe there isn't one already, is the reaction I often get. And to be honest, committee, when I joined this parliament, that was my reaction too. I set up this group with the sole aim of bringing together our political parties, parliamentarians, third party organisations, charities, LGBT groups and individuals who also need a voice. We held our first meeting recently to discuss the aims and ambitions of the group. And I was told afterwards by one charity who attended that meeting that it was actually the first time that many such groups had sat in the same room to share ideas, debate agendas, and discuss a more joined up approach to how we can help this community. And in the day of age, when charity and campaign groups are fighting desperately for self-survival, often the bigger picture is forgotten and the smaller voice is lost. The collective outcome is secondary to the individual agenda. If nothing else, committee, this group will bring together a wealth of experience, an unprecedented mix of views and opinions over the period of this parliament and will seek to inform our lawmakers, influence our decision makers, and lead the debate, not follow it. I ask the committee, therefore, to consider the approval of this group to send a powerful message to the rest of the world that this parliament is not afraid to tackle these often difficult and uncomfortable problems head on. I, for one, will play a proud part in this group, and along with my fellow co-conveners and other members, hopefully will make the LGBTI community in Scotland proud that we do not just talk, but we act. And that action hopefully starts today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I invite any questions from members? Um, Mr Johnson? Um, first of all, I think uh, uh, the creation of this group is, is hugely welcome. Um, I think it is ex ex extraordinary that it doesn't exist already. I think one of the key functions of cross-party groups, in a sense, is to sense, sort of, um, uh, I think, kind of bring bring outside groups together and help provide a kind of a, 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 con a consistent voice, or at least bring out the different voice. And I think this is one area where I'm very aware that there are a, a kind of a number of different overlapping communities, albeit with distinct perspectives. I'd just be interested to hear kind of how you sort of see the role of the group in terms of bringing those voices together and, 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 and bringing out the diversity of voices so that, that people in this parliament can, can, can hear those different perspectives. I think that's a very uh, fair question. It's also a very challenging one because you're right, uh, you know, in, the, uh, in my experience in, in the LGBTI community that there are so many different organisations often seeking to uh, achieve the same outcome uh, and you know I've over my over my years come across various almost factions within some of those groups themselves and it can be difficult and I think the purpose of this group uh, or one of the benefits of having a group like this will be the ability to 
bring people round the table together in an environment that they often wouldn't do so. Uh, as I said in my statement, uh, you know, in a, after the, the first meeting, somebody said to me um, anonymously, you know, I, I was really surprised we've never actually sat around the table together. And these are charities often fighting for the same funding or trying to achieve similar outcomes. And I really enjoyed that platform, the ability to sit around the same table and, and actually in a, in, a, in a closed environment, share ideas and be honest with each other rather than, uh, you know, uh, sort of fighting for our own individual agenda. So I think we do have to create a group and it's important that the group uh, gives everyone a, a fair voice and an equal voice, uh, be they a large, large well-funded organisation or a small individual, small local group. Everyone should have an ability to, to chip in and we're looking at ways in, 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 in the work programme uh, agendas to how we do that, how do we make sure that it's, it's not just one or two themes that dominate the discussions over the course of the, the meetings. Uh, there are some very important uh, themes that do have to be discussed, but I, I do also think there are a number of other uh, issues which are, are new to me. For example, uh, we, we're talking about things like geriatric, geriatric care for older gay people who live on their own or live in care homes, or for people who live in rural communities, uh, you know, what, what facilities are available for them from a, a health or support point of view. Um, so there are lots of other issues which aren't mainstream necessarily that we do have to give a voice to. Um, how we facilitate that, yes, I think it there will be a challenge, but that's the, the purpose of the, the, co the four co-conveners, to make sure that the group is as is, is, is neutral as it can be. Mr Stewart? Thank you, can, I, can I commend Mr Green for bringing this to this uh, committee today? I think this has a real opportunity uh, uh, within uh, uh, the community, the political community, and also uh, the outside community. And I do believe that we have our part to play uh, in this process, and by having this group, that will give us that platform. Now, my question to you would be, how do you plan to promote and publicise uh, and use uh, the platform uh, to benefit uh, the communities that you're trying to represent and also to try and bring them closer to the political domain? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I, mean, I think the, f the fact that the group will, be, will meet and be held in the parliament itself is a good start. Uh, it's often, uh, you know, for some, it'll be the first time they've had access, direct access to parliamentarians. Um, the fact that we will uh, try and, I think, shadow uh, the work programme along with the legislative agenda of the Scottish Government is quite important. So we will be um, looking at uh, the timelines of when we think bills may be coming through and, and where there are areas in those bills where there is an LGBTI element that we should be thinking about or debating and discussing ourselves. Um, I think, uh, you know, it, it's, it's also an open group as well. You know, I, I, I've, the invitation is there to, to any member of any political party of any uh, gender, any sexual orientation to come in and, be, and participate in that group. And I'm very pleased to say that there's been a lot of interest across the political spectrum and, and people who may not, not necessarily want to be a member of the group or have time to, but they still want me to report back in terms of what's been discussed because it affects health issues or education or equality or uh, the economy. There are lots of different areas that I think it will, will touch upon. So. Um, it, I think it, it just gives people that unique opportunity to come in and, and, and let their voice actually be heard in a, in a public sphere. Uh, in terms of promoting the group, I think it's up to each individual member to do its best, um, to let people know the group is out there. We'll, we'll discuss as a group, I'm sure, uh, how we want to manage that in terms of social media and online presence uh, to, to get, get the word out there, um, that, that we're, we're, we're here and, and, and we're, you know, anyone is welcome to come and, and be part of that debate. So. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Arthur. Thank you, convener, and good morning. I, too, would like to join other members of the committee in commending and congratulating uh, Jamie Green in bringing this group forward, and also um, uh, share uh, my surprise that uh, no such group um, had been in existence. So just a, a very specific point I, I want to pick up on, um, in which uh, it references um, in your submission that we are also taking on some of the functions of other groups which no longer exist in S5, such as the Bloodborne Virus Group. I will declare an interest. I am in the process, along with um, other members, including the Deputy Convener, of um, re-establishing that group. And while I think it is uh, certainly a very pertinent and important issue to be taken up by um, the LGBTI plus CPG, um, I think we would agree that uh, bloodborne virus and sexual health has goes much further. For example, um, hepatitis C being a, a key example, which is um, uh, well referenced within the Scottish Government's bloodborne virus framework. I just wonder if you would see um, any conflict in these two groups coexisting or conversely an opportunity to work together and cooperate. Yeah. Um, when I submitted the original uh, 
uh, uh, proposal, the information I had at the time was that that group wasn't able to get off the ground and they were looking for other means of, of promoting that, that particular cause. Uh, th I heard yesterday, actually, uh, luckily before I came here today, that that, that group is looking to re-establish itself and I'm very pleased about that. I think you're right, that, that, uh, that, is an, that has a wider agenda uh, that isn't just specific to the LGBTI community. Um, there's a lot of work to be done there in that group. I don't think there's any conflict of interest. I think, if anything, we can help each other. I'd like to think that when we're having a meeting uh, uh, which is dedicated to that subject matter that people from your group can come along and, 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 and be involved in that debate. And equally, where you, part of your work programme in that potential group, uh, is covering the LGBTI community, that someone from our group could come and join that too. I, I don't see any particular restrictions on crossover there. Um, I think we should probably share some uh, information on our plans and what we're both trying to achieve in that subject area to make sure there isn't any duplication. Um, but, but where possible, I'd like to think we can help each other. Okay. I would um, just finally emphasise that um, uh, as someone who has a cross-party group that has had joint meetings on several occasions with different groups, you know, we don't all live in isolation and we encourage members to look to opportunities for joint um, committee meetings within the CPGs um, going forward. Um, we will be taking the decision on this and it's Everyone content with that? Dating the decision at agenda item two today and you'll be informed of our decision in due course. So thank you very much for your attendance this morning and we'll just suspend shortly to allow Mr Green to, to leave the